welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider, the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Brywood alongside head coach Darren Schoenrock. And coach, you know, kind of stub your toe a little bit over the weekend against Cincinnati, but still two weeks left to play, so everything's still in your hands. But let's go back to uh, the midweek games last week. Tuesday night, got to come from behind, went over in Jonesboro at Arkansas State. Big win, not because it's going to get you anywhere or, or, or put you in a tournament or keep you out or anything, but that was win number 30 of the year. And it ends up being the first time in school history the program has hit that 30 win mark for five straight years. So uh, it is a nice milestone for the program. It, it is, Jeff. It, you know, it's you kind of overlook the the career milestones when you're in the midst of a chance to, to be in a regional. You know, the, the so the club kind of, the team kind of, yeah, it's a neat thing. There's a lot of guys in that dugout that weren't part of that team five years ago. Yeah. And there's obviously there's a lot of guys in that team five years ago that are not a part of this. But they do go, they go hand in hand for the program, and that's that's uh, that's what the that's what the the milestone is. It's, it's a program milestone, and it it shows that we're moving the program in the right direction. And, and as we continue to you know try to enhance facilities and and amp up recruiting, you, you think that's something that we can continue. Come back the next day, uh, get a win over Mississippi Valley. I think we all knew coming yeah. off the road trip to, to Connecticut, quick turnaround road game over at Jonesboro. And then at an early game on Wednesday, it was not going to be the prettiest of games, and it was a grinded out ball game. But Corey Chafin gets a two run triple, bottom of the seventh, opens up a tie ball game. And that, at that point, you can kind of feel the tension being relieved in the momentum swinging to your dugout. Yeah, you know, baseball is a different, it's different than any other sport in football and basketball. And it's not always go out there and just blast somebody that you're better. We, we were better than our, that we were better than Mississippi Valley State. Uh, and, and, but, but, you know, as of the fifth inning, you know, five innings into that thing, we were not better that day. We were tied, or six innings. So uh, you, you can't just out muscle an opponent or, or run faster than them. You've got to execute in the batter's box, and they they executed in the batter's box early, and we did not. And uh, and so now you, you get into a game, and, and it takes a big moment like Corey's moment to blow it open. And 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 you know, you look at even Arkansas State, Mississippi Valley, and then going into the weekend. Offensively, we just haven't been clicking on all cylinders like we were early, and so there there lies the the, the issues and the close games that we're playing. And, and finally, you know, we've we've talked several times about how you only played eight games the first month of the season, and since then it's been five games a week, every week. Now this week's exam week, so you're getting a little break before you go to Orlando, but maybe you can start to see a little of that fatigue starting to build up. Yes. Uh, Cincinnati came into town; they took two out of three, and it's just. Every year, you're going to have someone's number, and someone's going to kind of have yours. And this year, the Bearcats just going to have the Tigers' number. And uh, what can you say about Treg Habercorn? He kind of seems to be the yeah. big guy in the six games we played. Yeah, he's hurt us more than half has. Yeah, and uh, you know, his just moving balls at the right time. You know, there's a guy that's hitting 179 or yeah. 180. You just have a hard time getting out. And there's there's guys like that. Two of the losses were extra innings, and uh, so it's you know it's a toss up anybody's game. One one bunt that doesn't get down or gets down, and one hit. Uh, usually it makes a difference, but that's 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 the nature of our league, you know. And I've talked to coaches to throw out Cincinnati's record because they play their first 18 or something yeah. games on the road. Uh, they've got a good club, they've got good athleticism, and uh, they're getting enough on the mound now to keep them in games. Uh, they'll be a they'll be a force to be reckoned with in our league in the future, in, and maybe even in come tournament time. So. Uh, I hope we get to play him again in the tournament mm -hmm. because that means we'll go in as a one seed because they're probably going to be the eight seed. Yeah. So that'll be neat. That'll be neat to see. We're, we're in the hunt for that right now with two weekends left and have a great chance to do it. It's how close the league is that the top four, even though you lose a series, you're still a game out of first, and the top four are all separated by just, just one game. Uh, and it was big to salvage the game on Sunday. That's the one thing we've, we've always learned in conference play. If you can avoid the sweeps, you're still going to stay in the hunt. Yeah, and we have the tiebreaker on all four of the top teams. Yeah. So we just have to finish, you know, with one game better than any of those four, mm -hmm. and then we'll go as a one seed. So we got we got a challenge, you know. We've but, but historically we've played well at UCF through the years. Uh, our guys will be ready. They, you know, they're getting their feet back on. We played 38 games in uh, 40 uh, 49 days. Uh, is what somebody counted at one point. So I didn't realize it that was how significant it was and. And, uh, but this week's good. We're going to have a couple practices, uh, a good practice Tuesday, a light practice Wednesday, and then get on a plane Thursday and, and hopefully final exams from behind them. You mentioned, we mentioned having some people's number. It seems like we've always seemed to play well against UCF. We've had some really tight games. The benches have come out a couple times. <laughs> that, that's kind of become, uh, 
You know, that, that's something that developed in, in Old Conference USA, but it quickly became a pretty heated rivalry. It is, and, and the nature of, the, of, of how they play, uh, our guys have always competed very well there. Uh, our guys are very proud of, of, of what we stand for and how we play, and, and sometimes in baseball, you know, you, you don't really enforce wills on other teams. They're a team in the past that they, they try to force enforce mm -hmm. a will on you, and, and uh, our guys have done a good job stepping up to the challenge, and I think they will this year too. And you're going to be facing a team whose backs are really against the wall. They, they've got to, UCF's really got to perform well the last two weeks to get back in any kind of contention, maybe to, to get to a regional. So you'll be fighting a very hungry team that took two or three from USF over the weekend. Yeah, that's a big series win for them, and uh, that's a big rivalry. Uh, they are uh, they're a team that was exploding offensively early in the year and have quieted down some now and and uh, but but now you know, the flip side of it is they're starting to pitch a little mm -hmm. better the last few weeks and uh, and their their conference record is below 500 the conference record doesn't show the quality of team that they are I uh, did an interview last night on Sirius radio and and they uh, uh, one of the things that that is starting to get national attention now is the value of our league in baseball and it, and it reflects with the number three RPI so UCF's right in the middle of that. They're 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 ahead of us in, in, in some capacity. They're behind us in league standings. It'll be a, it'll be a good battle. And finally, coach, uh, next Tuesday you're going to play a split double header. This is part of trying to make up some games. Uh, you have the Babe Howard Classic already scheduled at 6:30 at Millington, but to try to get to around 55, 56 games, Martin will actually be coming in for a one o'clock game at FedEx Park. We in that make the dash for for Millington, <laughs> so we'll play that uh, double header next week. Yeah, it'd be fun. Day day night double header, two different sites. You know, and I don't know if it's going to help us or hurt us, win lose, or, but I promise. I look those senior class in the eye and I go, guys, I'm going to try to get 56 games. I want you to be able to put the uniform on 56 times. That's what the NCAA allows. Uh, they come to school to play baseball, and and we had a number of rainouts, snowouts, coldouts early five to be exact or six and so I, f I wanted to figure out a way I didn't want to look at these seniors and have them go out and as a team that played below 50 games going right in the tournament uh, so I you know I've had people say well why do you why do you play that it's just gonna hurt you no it's it's a chance for the seniors to put that uniform on and go do battle and and uh, and then Martin will be amped up you know they 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 want to uh, prove the point they want to recruit this part of the state uh, it'll be a big challenge and now we got to do it twice and, and so so it's a day night fun day we'll, we'll play one at FedEx Park and and one to honor the great Babe Howard who's done so much for our baseball locally University of Memphis and that and uh, and regionally and, and and honor him at Millington that night all right sounds good thanks coach thanks Jeff that is head coach Darren Sean Rock I'm Jeff Brightwell with the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network